A Long Island woman says she was raped by her psychotherapist, and tonight she's only talking to News 4. I-team reporter Chris Glorioso looked into her case and found a loophole in the law that could help crooked counselors dodge criminal charges. Chris? Well, Sue, it is not often that a woman who says she was raped wants to go on television to tell her painful story, but this therapy patient says the law needs to be changed, and that's why she contacted the I-team. When Long Island psychiatrist Marshall Hubsher was arrested last month, accused of raping one of his patients, Denise Weisbrod couldn't believe it. I was absolutely infuriated. Denise says she too was raped by her therapist. I was infuriated because it mirrored my case almost exactly. But there was one difference. Denise's counselor was a state licensed psychotherapist, not a doctor, not a psychiatrist. Someone has to look at the system. It was eight years ago Denise found herself reaching out for help. She met Scott Burzon, a counselor who was also an administrator of the Brentwood Mental Health Clinic, a facility run by Suffolk County. My whole life was in his hands. He knew everything about me. Denise says she revealed very painful details about once being date raped. She had issues trusting men. Four years into therapy, Denise says Burzon suggested she have sex with him to help her once again trust men. I wanted to be better, and so I believed him. Therapy sessions turned into sex sessions inside Burzon's office, Denise says. The two-year affair was seemingly consensual, but it was, in fact, illegal. You were date raped, you went to a therapist, and then you were raped by the therapist. Right. According to state law, therapists who have sex with patients during treatment are guilty of statutory rape. The patient is unable to consent, and that's what the criminal statute here in New York recognizes. Therapist-patient sex is a crime, but the I-team has learned not all statutory rape complaints against therapists make it to criminal authorities. In 2011, Denise reported Scott Burzon to New York's Office of Professional Discipline but she says OPD never passed the complaint to police. It's really hard to come forward and then nothing be done about it. The I-team contacted OPD. The agency did not dispute Denise's story, but did say confidentiality laws prevent state regulators from releasing any details. We have to have better communication between law enforcement and the medical community. Nassau County DA Kathleen Rice says there's a loophole in the law. OPD is not mandated to report statutory rape. What I would say to our legislators here in the state is we have to make them a mandated agency. The state is only required to call police or the DA when the accused therapist is a psychiatrist like Marshall Hubscher. Licensed psychotherapists like Scott Burzon can get a pass. I don't think there is a person out there that's not going to be outraged by that. There is no logical reason for there to be mandated reporting for psychiatrists and not for psychotherapists. They're in the same relationship. The patients are just as vulnerable. Despite Denise's complaint to OPD, records show Scott Burzon's license remained active for seven months, a seven-month window where he could still see patients until Burzon was found dead in a room at this hotel near MacArthur Airport. He committed suicide. That didn't have to happen either. Now that Scott Burzon is dead, Denise Weisbrod is suing his estate. Burzon's family did not return our calls for comment on this story. And as to any investigation into Burzon's practice, OPD says when a therapist dies, investigations are closed. Ultimately, Denise Weisbrod summoned the courage to go to the Suffolk County DA herself, but a spokesperson of the DA's office told News 4 there wasn't enough evidence to go forward with a rape case. Meanwhile, in Nassau County, the rape case against psychiatrist Marshall Hubscher is going forward. He has pleaded not guilty. Chris, we hear about these stories from time to time. How big a problem is this? Well, the research is not current on this, but therapist-patient sex is uh, quite common. If you look at a study from 1998, it said that psychiatrists make up just 7% of the population of doctors, but they make up 28% of all the doctors disciplined for sex offenses. That's a lot. All right, Chris, thank you. And mental health counselors who have sex with patients, even if it's away from their office, could soon be in serious legal trouble. It's part of a new law up for consideration in Albany right now, following a News 4 I-Team report. 
Right now, it is statutory rape in New York when a therapist has sex with a patient regardless of age, but only if the sex occurs in a counseling session. Assemblywoman Amy Pollan called that outrageously ridiculous and said her bill will make therapist-patient sex illegal, period. You feel complete outrage um, that, uh, you know, that the law is so flawed in this regard. Uh, and, you know, I, I felt a, an immediate desire to want to help. Also under her proposed law, state regulators who find a psychotherapist is having sex with a patient will be required to report it to law enforcement. The I-team discovered the state is not required to report these cases, even if regulators know it's happening. Earlier this week, the News 4 I team exposed a loophole in the way sex complaints against therapists are handled in New York. In response to our report, one lawmaker has now drafted legislation to close that loophole. Chris Glorioso has this I team follow up. In New York State, therapists who have sex with patients are guilty of statutory rape, but the office that licenses therapists is not required to report sex abuse complaints to police. After one lawmaker saw our initial report, He's promising reform. I really was dependent on him for my psychiatric care. I, I, he, was, I, he was the person I went to for everything. Though it is painful, Long Island's Denise Weisbrod wanted to tell her story. She says she was taken advantage of by a predatory therapist. In 2008, she says Scott Burzon, a state-licensed counselor, convinced her to have sex with him. The inappropriate sex sessions took place during counseling appointments in Burzon's office, Denise says. Three years later, she reported the twisted sexual affair to New York's Office of Professional Discipline. But Denise says OPD failed to pass the complaint to police. Something horrible happened to me, and the agencies that were put in place to help me failed me. Therapist patient sex is equivalent to statutory rape in New York. Even seemingly voluntary sex is illegal because patients are considered too vulnerable to consent. Despite the seriousness of the crime, a spokesperson for OPD said the licensing agency is not required to report rape complaints to the police. I was shocked. Felix Ortiz chairs the State Assembly Mental Health Committee. Within 48 hours of seeing the I-Team story, his office drafted this legislation. It would force OPD to report therapist-patient sex complaints directly to law enforcement. We're going to bring new legislation into play. We already are in the process of drafting the legislation. My counsel is already reviewing the new language. As the former head of the Manhattan DA Sex Crimes Division, former prosecutor Lisa Friel helped draft the law that made therapist-patient sex a crime in the first place. She says mandatory reporting to criminal authorities makes sense. The kind of mental health care provider that would have sex with a patient is apt to do it again and again until they're stopped. So society has an interest in investigating that and stopping that. I think our legislature has to make these changes, and they have to make them now. Denise Weisbrod ultimately did file a statutory rape complaint herself with the Suffolk County DA. The DA's office declined to prosecute, citing a lack of evidence. This spring, Scott Burzon was found dead in a hotel room near MacArthur Airport. Burzon's family did not return our repeated requests for comment on this story. When a licensed counselor has sex with a patient in the middle of a treatment session, that's a crime in New York. It's called statutory rape. Even so, when an allegation of sexual misconduct is made against a therapist, state regulators don't have to report that to police. This bill would change that. My whole life was in his hands. He knew everything about me. We first told you Denise Weisbrod's story last month. She reported her therapist to state regulators after she says he manipulated her into sexual trysts inside the counseling office. I wanted to be better, and so I believed him. The complaint amounts to a statutory rape allegation, but the state's Office of Professional Discipline did not forward Denise's report to police. A loophole in the law allows regulators to keep therapists' investigations quiet. Clearly, uh, this is a case where there was an omission. After seeing the I-Team report, Westchester County Assemblywoman Amy Paulin took action. She sponsored and passed a bill that would force state regulators to forward therapist-patient sex complaints to police. Paulin says she was inspired to close the loophole because she was the victim of a statutory rape when she was just 14. I want to make sure this, this, this rape never happens to anyone else 
uh, without law enforcement being involved. It just cried out for an immediate change. Stephen Saland is sponsoring the bill in the state Senate. He says it will send a message to therapists, have sex with your patients and police will find out. Read the last section. Reporting from Albany, Chris Glorioso, News 4 New York.